Hi, this is going to be a temporary video, mostly because it won't have any relevance as of next week. But basically, I'm very concerned that there is a lot of people that don't understand a massive thing that is happening to them next week. So I figured, although this is something that I would normally do via work, we haven't been able to. Uh, mostly due to sort of the geography of the area, but this is important. I'm getting annoyed by people talking about it and not knowing what it is. So I figured if this helps make one person less confused, then my work here is done. So, as the title of this video suggests, WTF is devolution. Well, if I have to try and explain sort of the ins and outs of devolution and the various deals that have been offered because of devolution, I'll be here all night and you'll be none the wiser, so I'm going to try and do this in the most simple way possible. Usually when you think of devolution, you think of the devolved nations, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, etc. This is kind of like that, but not on such a grand scale. Basically, George Osborne, y'all remember him, right? He had this idea of giving more autonomous powers to certain parts of the UK that were sort of growing economically or industrially. So you'll have heard the term Northern Powerhouse being chucked around. The Northern Powerhouse is a devolved area. Another place that's been devolved is the West of England Combined Authority, which congratulations if you live in Bath and North East Somerset, South Gloucester or Bristol, that's you. So the best way I can explain what has happened to you and what is going to happen in the future is to look at the city of London. So London is a devolved area in the sense that it is run by the, I think they call it the General London Assembly, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. They have all the laws that Westminster sets like the rest of the country does but they are able to kind of run themselves a little bit. So this is why London Transport is so much better than transport anywhere else, because it's being run kind of cohesively by all the individual councils in London. So the way you have to think of it is this. In London, all the different boroughs have different councils. For instance, Tower Hamlets has a council. Hammersmith has a council. Tooting has a council, but all of them are within London. You're with me so far. All of those councils have a council leader. All of those council leaders work together to make sure things like transport, various parts of the economy, regeneration, development of adult skills, those kind of things, all work cohesively across the whole city. And they are overseen by a mayor, Sadiq Khan. Basically, for you guys in the West of England, you are getting your own version of Sadiq Khan. And that's kind of how it's going to work. All of your usual councils will continue to do all of the normal council things, but they will come together to make sure that things like transport, skills, social care, that kind of thing, are all run cohesively. Can you imagine how good it would be if the transport from Bath to Bristol actually worked? Oh, I'm excited and I don't even live there. <laughs> so, simply put, the leader of Bath and North East Somerset Council the leader of South Gloucester Council and the leader of Bristol Council are basically going to sit on a board where they work together to make sure stuff gets done and they will be overseen by a mayor who you get to choose next Thursday. So now you're kind of less confused about devolution, I hope. Let's get this mayor thing out of the way because I feel like that's the bit that's confusing people. Here's the thing you need to know. Just because someone is named mayor doesn't mean they have the same job as someone else with the title mayor. Bear with me here. So I'm going to use Baines as the example because I work there and I used to live there. But in Baines, there is the city of Bath, which has a mayor. There is also a town called Midsummer Norton, which has a mayor. These mayors are not the same thing that you are going to vote for next Thursday. These people are ceremonial mayors. Basically, it's just a title that means nothing that they are given so that they have a bit more pomp and ceremony when they do certain events. They get to wear a giant chain and smile at cameras. That is what that title means. And regardless of what happens next Thursday, those two mayors will remain mayors, you know, until the next one comes along. It's not going to change that at all. It is not the same thing. Somewhat more confusingly, sticking with Baines here for the minute, last year, the people of Bath and North East Somerset had a referendum over whether or not to say yes to a mayor for Baines. Again, 
This is not the same as the mayor you're going to vote for next Thursday. That referendum was about changing the council system to what they have in Bristol, which also has a mayor. I'll get there. There are two different types of way in which you can run a council. You can either run it the way it is run in Baines, where you have a council leader and a load of elected councillors that sit in a cabinet and make decisions, or you can do it the way they do in Bristol, where the council leader is known as the mayor. <sighs> Basically, Marvin Rees is the council leader in Bristol. He just has a different title and has slightly different powers to the council leader in Bath and North East Somerset but essentially they do the same job, they lead the council. This vote on Thursday will not affect Marvin Rees's job or his job title. He will remain mayor of Bristol. There will just be an extra mayor above him. <laughs> I feel like a lot of the people that, because I work in Baines, a lot of the people I talk to get confused about the idea of the mayor because of the vote last year against having a mayor for Bath and North East Somerset. And I can understand that confusion. There are literally loads of different job titles with the word mayor in that are all completely different jobs. The vote last year wasn't a vote on whether or not to have a mayor. The vote last year was a vote on whether or not to change the council system to the mayoral system, which would have given you a mayor. Even if the people of Baines had voted for having a mayor for Baines last year, they would still have another mayor to vote for next week because they're different, they're different things, they're different types of mayors. This is a thing about the English language, isn't it? There's lots of words that are the same that mean different things. Basically, on Thursday, I'm voting for the West of England Combined Authority Mayor, which is basically Sadiq Khan. Last year, if you lived in Baines, the vote was for the change in the council system, which is basically Marvin Rees. So different kinds of mayor. Let's talk a bit about next Thursday. You should have received a polling card and a little information booklet in the post about what's happening next Thursday with the mayors. Um, it'll have all the different candidates in, there are six of them. I'm not going to list them here because I don't, I don't live in the area, I live outside the boundary, I don't care which one of them you vote for. There will be a link below, I will link to the official West of England Combined Authority website which will explain more about devolution, it will explain what it is, what's going to happen, what the different powers are that this West of England Combined Authority Mayor will have, the amount of money they're going to have to use, and the different projects that they will be in charge of. All of that will be on that um, website, so do go check it out. If you're A, confused, which I hope you're not, or B, intrigued, which I hope you are. The BBC did a hustings with the six mayor candidates, um, which is available on iPlayer, and I'll do a link to that below as well. I'm not here to tell you who to vote for, I'm just here to tell you what it is that you're voting for. There's so many people that I speak to that are like, oh, I'm not going to bother voting because I don't understand it. I just want you to understand it and to go and vote because, let's be real here, a woman didn't chuck herself in front of a horse for us not to use our suffrage. So go and vote. I don't care who you vote for, just, you know, I just want people to be aware that this is a really big, important thing and no one is engaging with it, and I don't know if that's voter apathy, or if that's just because they don't understand. And if it's that they don't understand, the resources are below for you to understand. <laughs> that's about all I have to say on it, really. Um, go use your vote.